So here's the problem this add-on solves. We've got a bent plane here, just a grid bent into shape with modifiers. Cell shader, we're looking at the normals, directional sun lamp. This is the most clean something could be for cell shading. And that's still not perfect. We've got boundary issues, but that's normal. So now let's make it less perfect. Here's a shape key, slightly randomizing the spacing. And that is messing up our shading, even just a little bit. It gets messed up in proportion to the amount of change in spacing, the irregularity of the mesh. And that shape key is before these modifiers, so it's still getting the same shape. This is still as good as this could be, short of being evenly spaced. And it's already ruining it. So how do we deal with this? We want tune shading to be smooth, but meshes cannot always be exactly evenly spaced quads, not even with amazing retopology, especially not game meshes. So easy solution, we just blur this or smooth it to fix it, right? So this is geometry nodes blur, and it doesn't help, even a lot of iterations. It kind of makes it worse. That it eventually just kind of destroys the shape entirely. Yeah, so that's no good. Okay, so how about just using the regular old edit mode commands? We'll just apply this, and in edit mode, we can get our normal commands and hit smooth, and uh, it's doing the exact same thing. So that's not any different because it's doing the exact same thing. So that won't solve the problem. So how about the smooth modifier? That looks nice and clean. So we can copy that and then use a data transfer to transfer its nice clean normals back. And it's the exact same thing as the others. And that is because it is the exact same thing as the others, just on position. It is smooth here because the position has been made even. But if you transfer those same normals back to uneven position, it's still not going to look right. And of course, we can make this even worse. That made the topology even more uneven, and the results are terrible, even though we actually added a lot of geometry. Higher poly, but more jagged shading. And even if we remove the shape key here, just that is enough to completely shred the regular shading. And there is also triangles to worry about. Triangulating this doesn't make a huge difference, but look at what happens once we turn the blur on. Different. And this is because the way blur works is for each vertex, it averages all the connected vertices. So triangulation adds new edges, thus new connections. So now it's getting influence from vertices it didn't before, and that changes the shape. It will never converge to a smooth shape. The solution to all these problems is Laplacian smoothing and weighted normals. Let's see some Laplacian smooth instead of blur. First, it deals with those boundary issues, even on a quad mesh. Next, let's make it uneven, and that hasn't changed the shading. It is smoothing out the unevenness. And with triangulation, still works, makes no difference at all. In fact, it's always triangulated when this runs under the hood. And bevel, still a few problems, but it sure does make a difference. Last little problems are solved by inverted area weighted normals. That those work quite well, even without smooth. The smooth takes care of some of the problems, like the spacing, but if we look at just the beveled version, this is doing a lot. And it doesn't mind triangles. Area weights adjust the vertex normal based on the size of the faces contributing to it. Usually that looks like this. This is actually exaggerating the problem we already had. And that's because the original problem is because each face counts for the same, but they're different sizes. So regular area weights cause larger faces to count even more. And this is great on hard surface models where you might have very big flat faces and then something like very small bevels on edges. But inverting this is better for cell shading because it cancels out the differences in faces. So we get a smooth surface even if we have different sizes. So in short, this modifier is letting us get clean results even if the topology itself isn't clean. The actual shape still needs to be, and you still need to have enough vertices, but you don't have to worry about uneven spacing or triangles as much with this. Here is a more practical example on a full character. This character was built with subsurf, so it's relatively high poly for a game model. 
and it's quite clean, and it's got almost all evenly spaced quads, except for some places where there are poles or triangulation. A clean mesh like this, there are still problems with the shading, like here, and we can get all sorts of weird barbs. So let's see if we can improve that with some regular blur. And we can, because this is already mostly clean quads. But we can still see that there's some issues where there's unevenness. Especially if we look down here at the knee, where there's a bunch of triangles and other stuff. No amount of blur is really going to clean that up, because e even as it cleans one area, it pulls the others in the wrong direction. Now let's compare the Laplacian smooth. That were already clean, it's about the same. But in the problem areas, it has successfully smoothed out the wrinkles. So Laplacian Smooth works better in general, and it also allows for many more options. There are tons of inputs here that can be controlled with vertex groups or colors or any Geonodes attribute, and there's more that I'll be adding in the future. And many of those could not be added to something based around the Blur node. And this modifier is only the first part of the overall toolset. It makes it easier to get clean shading, but it doesn't necessarily give you the right stylized shape. For example, this face is clean, but this isn't what an anime character's face shading should look like. That's a job for a proxy mech, and we're planning on adding one soon just for dealing with anime character faces. And there are more features to add to the modifier. We have lots of options to control the amount of smoothing in different areas, but there's still some missing fundamental features. Like on the hair here, it does help, but it's not really handling stuff like borders and sharp edges properly yet. So that's still being worked on. For now, this modifier is solving fundamental problems with getting clean shading on irregular meshes. Typical game workflows avoid this problem because they have a high resolution sculpt and then bake a normal map from it to the final game asset. But stylized characters often don't use this workflow at all. They tend to be polymodeled or use templates or many other systems. And there's problems with cell shading and normal maps in general. This tool should help anybody who's not using the regular high poly to low poly bake workflow. And it's not only for anime characters. You can use this on anything that needs clean shading.